Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea, welcome back to a WTL match between two A-tier players, Clem versus Hero in the best of two format. We can take a look at their hexagons, we see both of their micro is maxed out. Uh, Hero slightly better macro, better mindset as well, but worse when it comes to strategy. And Clem, the absolute king of offense, according to the Chinese organizers of the WTL, who uh, appoint these scores to the players. Highest tier is the S tier, and so far I think only Maru has the S tier. Of course, Saron not playing for any teams makes it impossible for him to get the S tier. And the tiers are divided by points, so anything above 80 points is A tier, until you hit 90, then you get S tier. Anything below 80 is B tier, and anything below 70 is C tier, anything below 60 is D tier. But these two players... A tier players. And I absolutely agree. Couldn't agree more. Here in the top right, spawning as the Blue Terran player playing for Team Liquid. It is Clem. And in the bottom left, as our Red Protoss player playing for Team Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It is Hero with that capital O. There used to be a, another hero as well. They used to be known as uh, this hero, the DPG hero. Used to be known as CG Antus hero, because he used to play for CG Antus. Then he also had a liquid hero. The hero, uh, I believe it was spelled with a capital H, and no other capital letters in that name. At least not that I can recall. So it's a, definitely a difference of uh, capitalization of the word hero. And the liquid hero actually was quite good. I think he won a Dreamhack Winter back in the day, which was kind of like the World Championship, but different. It wasn't exactly a BlizzCon, but it was a very important tournament. You had to collect DreamHack points to qualify for it and all that good jazz. So, yeah, it's uh, we have had two very successful players in StarCraft 2 with the name Hero. But this bad boy uh, is currently probably the best Protoss player in the world. When I think of him, I think perhaps a little bit weaker in PvP than Max Packs currently. Although Max Packs has dropped a couple of series lately against Kung Fu Banda, against Goblin hasn't looked untouchable or as untouchable as he did before but hero when it comes to the, the pvt matchup when it comes to the pvz matchup he definitely is king of course got knocked out by maru in the most recent gsl is what it is in the semi-finals and there's no shame in losing to maru anyway managed to beat him last season so that's nice when you uh Ask Aligalak, I do believe Aligalak says that Hero is currently the best player. Clem opening up with a command center on the low ground here. Well, this probe is uh, dying, I think. Ooh, ooh. No, it's gonna stay alive. Cool. That's pretty sick control actually here out of Hero. It's gonna stay around for a little bit longer. This is a reactor first coming out of Clem. And with a reactor first, there are two options. You can either open uh, Reaper Reaper or you can open up with Marine Marine. If it is Marine Marine, as a Protoss player, you know that the first possible timing for the Marines to be out is 223. For Reapers, well, you add 18 seconds, so that would be uh, 241. So we see these first two Marines and he's popping out at 224. Hero just wants to get the confirmation on that, right? That's why he's still there with the probe. He's like, hey, I want to know whether this is Marine Marine or Reaper Reaper because it might... It, it might influence the way he moves his initial gateway units and whether he wants a chrono boost on the second gateway unit or not. All of these things can definitely be influenced by the first two un units popping out. Uh, on top of that, you also want to continuously scout what else is being built from that barracks. Ooh. Oh, quick, quick control there. This is why he's an eight tier player with 82 total points. It's just because he's so darn fast. So yeah, you want to see whether uh, the second round of barracks units is going to be marines and the third round of barracks units is also going to be marines and this is a very important moment as well yeah this is perfect you always want to scout whether that factory is swapping over to the reactor or not because every now and again you'll see this type of move out six marines and then two hellions kind of come after it and then a double mine go after this is a very dangerous push and you need a battery against that so we see a hero scouted that factory immediately threw down a battery in his natural and might even full wall here, yeah. That's a that's a, that's something that we see quite often with double gateway unit before warp gate. So rather than getting a third gateway unit, you prefer having faster robotics facility, faster tech, and it, it does make you a little bit more vulnerable. And a full wall in that case is going to keep you safe against any type of Hellions. Clem, however, didn't actually want to build any Hellions. Clem said, no, Hellions are fun, but you know what's more fun? Lots of mines in the meta. I'm gonna throw down a very quick third command center as well over here. As a prism is being constructed, this is going to be a three gate blink opener coming out of Hero. It's a build that he's been playing quite a bit lately. Uh, 
Forgate Blink was the most popular build order for a while, but nowadays it seems that at least Hero believes that the Three Gate Blink is a bit more viable. And straight up killing your opponent with Four Gate Blink has gotten a lot harder. And cutting that one gate, yes, it cuts a couple of workers, but or a couple of units, but it does help out in the in the end. Ooh, a little bit slow there on the pool with the probes. Mine is going to connect behind the camera, so we don't get to see the damage. Of course, we do see the minus ten here. Prism also is going to take a big hit straight in the face. Ten workers going down here. And the follow-up here is a Raven as well as a tank. Bunker hasn't finished up yet though, so that could be painful. Marines trying to desperately get back home. There's not that many Marines, because let's not forget, the factory had been producing from the reactor, which means that almost no extra Marines have been built. The barracks was busy building a, a tech lab. This bunker not being done is actually kind of painful here. SEV gets sniped, auto turret needs to be landed. Another Marine will get taken out. Bunker will finish up right now. Can we see a quick repair? There's not enough surface area on this bunker to truly repair. That means it's going to fall. There's almost no marines left. I think I still count five marines. The tank is going to make its way up onto the high ground. But oh, there's like eight marines, actually. This is a decent marine count. And despite Clem losing four... To Hello, don't fight outside of tank range, maybe? Thank you very much. Despite Clem losing 15 workers here with the triple CC, once that... Ooh, no, 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 no. You can't afford to lose that. You absolutely cannot afford to lose that tank here. He's gonna keep it alive, but it's not sieged anymore. And now the tank is going to go down. Even attacked his own depot there for a, a millisecond. 17 workers have gone down. I was gonna say, despite losing 15 workers, as long as the tanks stay alive and your marine count is healthy, you have the triple CC with the orbitals. Hero doesn't have a third base yet. This might actually be okay. Right now, I'm not quite sure if there are enough marines to truly protect this tank. So the tank, yeah, is going to move back upstairs, I do believe. And I like this call quite a bit here. Salads move wood. This is an interesting move. Not a good type of interesting, I don't think. Losing the prism and losing any type of follow-up pressure means that... Honestly, Clem is just going to clear this relatively easily. We see triple SCV production coming in. 48 against 51 supply right now. Still no third base for Hero. Yes, Clem is behind in workers he's also behind in income currently but he does have triple racks You'll already done a little bit of a pause eh, don't apologize to us hero Ooh. all right well skip to the pause Ooh. a mouse issue now this could mean two things of course this could mean that hero's uh like his, his mouse that is connected to the computer stopped working or it could mean that he has a bunch of like uh domesticated mice living with him and they escaped from their cage or they were nibbling on the cable, something like that. That is the thing that mice do. Or he has an actual rodent problem, you know, like they're not non-domesticated mice. And they're just running around in his house and someone screamed and he had to go save the day, something like that. There's a lot of possibilities here. Just saying a mouse issue isn't very clear. What is very clear to me right now is that Clem has a pretty decent position. Uh, it's just up that base. This is two base coming out of Hero, by the way, going up to eight gates right now. Plus one attack, as well as charge coming in. This DT is doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, Marauders trying to be uh, blasted here by this DT. At the same time, in the natural, there's also a Dark Templar uh, dishing out a little bit of damage against them as CVs. Peoples will get raised. There should be plenty of scans available, though, with triple CC. We have a turret in the main base. A lot of these gateways have now finished up. Oh, I don't... I'm not sure what I think of this entire position. The fact that Hero doesn't have a third base yet worries me a little bit. Especially the moment mines come into play, right? That would be rough. There's just no scans available. That had to be the most unlucky timing in the world here. Oh my god, you can't be serious. DT is gonna turn around, so it's like, I embrace death. And he, as he dies. Ooh. Interesting blink in here. Uh, Prism also trying to move in. Salads attacking a lot of them marines, but... Yes, a couple of SCVs will go down. This one is really, really good for Clem, honestly. Clem just in a good spot. Does not need to move out. Of course, Clem isn't quite aware of that. As he needs to return back to his ramp. More zealots coming in. Hold position, hold position on the SCVs. There we go. A little bit slow with that. Lost four or five extra workers. More than he should have, I believe, in that uh, exact position. Is there? There's no concussive yet either, is there? It's another mistake. 
Yeah, the, the problem for Clem here is, is that he's completely unaware of what's going on right now. Clem probably believes that he's playing against a 3-base hero as well, while Hero is currently just on 2-base, is just now throwing down his 3rd. Clem can just sit back, throw down Barracks 4, 5, get a Ghost Academy, eventually push out across the map with 1-1, one, one. but there's really no hurry, and Clem is a player that, let's not forget about the Hexagon, is a, a 10 in offense, and he always wants to be on the map dealing damage, but right now he should just be defending, being a, uh, yeah, being a, a, a campy little Terran. It's not really his style, but he needs to be capable of playing like that as well. A couple of units are going to get picked off by the Zealots. An odd move as they charged in and then ran back. Hero's unit movement in general is kind of... Kind of sick. Like it's a good type of sick, you know? Not the flu type of sick. It's like, <laughs> Can't think anymore and have a headache. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Two stalkers and a prism go down here. That could have been really bad for Clem. Uh, salad run by should get caught. That's what, five, six salads? Not oh, a difficult to counter, so quick. Six salads are going to get taken out there. At the same time, DTs in the third base will force a lift off on some of these uh, bio units. I'm kind of all over the place defensively here. As the DTs have shown themselves. Clem lost four more workers. I wonder how many workers he lost total already this game. It's probably somewhere close to like, what, five? Oh, Jesus. Uh, 15? Maybe 20 even? Probably more. Nah, way more. It's like 30. 32, 33 maybe. Like the initial blink and already was like 17 workers. That DT is going to end up falling. We do have a Ghost Academy on the way. Do we already have Barracks 4 and 5? Not so sure if we do. I don't think so. I'm looking at the map. Oh, another mine gets sniped here. These blink DTs are being so ridiculously annoying right now. They're you know, just baiting out that scan and then wanting to blink away. Uh, Pre-stim, pre pre-stim. Get a blink away. Can we catch one of these DTs? I think we can. Another stim coming in. Needs to target properly on all of these DTs. Final DT. One, two. Oh my god, you can't be serious. One more scan? No. He got greedy, wanted all of them. I thought it was a correct play as well, but just not enough DPS to actually pull that move up. Once again, Clem moving out on the map. Despite him being about even in, in worker count and thus very far ahead when it comes to income because of the triple mules or should be very far ahead of course with the constant scans he hasn't really thrown down a mule in a little bit can't really be caught out on the map and this fight this defensive fight might be difficult a lot of mines have died over time for no real reason ghosts are on the way but won't be ready in time two immortals will join the fray as well zealot's kind of stuck behind the archon do manage to squeeze through there's just not that much bio here we still have two mines near this third base but this cc is just going to fall most likely once these units uh, turn their attention towards it. No says Hero, I don't actually want to fight into that CC. A lot of SCVs are being pulled. No Zealots to tank here, it means it could be a little bit scary. We do have a Zealot flank coming in from the left side right now. Eight more Zealots with plus one attack. No armor upgrades, there's just not enough bio. Blink forward here, coming out of Hero, sniping two of the Medivex down. Marauders being targeted and GG gets called as Hero wins game number one in this best of two on inside and out. And it means that Clem gets to pick the next map that also means that hero already won a map so i don't think he's gonna care too much yes uh yeah tough little game there for clem despite that very good early game in the last game clem's still just losing there let's not forget about that well the early early game i think we can divide that early game up into two parts the clem favorite part and the hero favorite part clem favorite part is when Clem killed 10 workers, and the hero favorite part is where Hero killed, uh, what was it, 18, 19, 20, 22 workers or so? With a simple 3 gate pressure, with Blink, of course, as well. Uh, felt like Clem underestimated a little bit what the counter damage really could be. Had no information either on the third base timing. And yes, the 4 mind drop was really cool, don't get me wrong. But one of the things that Hellions usually do is that if you don't get any damage down, is that at least you get scouting on the third base timing. So it informs you as to when a bunker might be a necessity. Because I think that's really just what happened there, right? Clem was too slow with that bunker, then blocked his own bunker repairing by getting a depot right next to it as well. The initial tank kind of got caught out as well. Like a really sloppy defense overall. And then afterwards, it is so difficult for Clem to figure out what position he actually is in. Like, is he in a position where he can simply just say something along the lines of, okay, I, I can camp forever, or does he need to go for a desperation? He doesn't know anything about the third base timing, does not have any air units out on the map to figure that out either, so just a sucky situation altogether.
for a clan. Let's not forget that he immediately lost that Raven as well at the start of the push, which really, really sucks. Like, Ravens just give so much value over time, the more energy they get uh, with their, your first push. Or defensively, you can use also auto turrets. You can use your anti-armor missile as well. This clan is uh, patrolling the SCV over here. We do have a Stalker being Chrono boosted out. I don't believe this bunker is going to end up finishing up. Uh, you're just not you're just not gonna be capable of doing anything here as a process player. You can't you can't deny this. Like this with this pylon positioning, I don't even see how you're gonna attack this SCV. Yeah, observer selecting this as well. I once again would like to give a shout out to this uh, to this observer who I believe is called Rain G, who is absolutely one of my favorite observers currently. Very good understanding of the game. Knows what's important to show. Is quite quick with the camera as well. And I always notice how important it is. Especially when you don't have... Like, usually when I, I'll cast a replay, right? I can zoom all over the map. Um, but yeah, if you have these type of uh, clean feet games. Where you don't have control over the camera. It's really important to have a good observer. I really do believe that Rangy is a powerful observer here. Good control out of Clamp. Don't forget this is with Ping. He's getting a couple of these uh, shot dodgings in. And he's targeting down the battery right now. Just attacking a stalker is really no point. If, <laughs> well, let's face it, if there's a battery still there. SCV is continuing to repair. I'm not sure if I prefer attacking the stalkers or the probes here. Yeah, I actually think that the probes are a better, are better core. I'm not sure why Clem is so keen on killing those stalkers. Could have killed three probes there. I think that was a huge mistake, actually. There is a Hellion in the main base which did something, but... No, this was... I, I don't agree with the decision making here. Tar taking out a stalker is correct if your bunker stays alive, but if you don't believe your bunker can stay alive, then for sure probes, probe killing is the, the priority here. Clem's position is good. He does have a command center. Needs to be careful to not lose all of these units for free. He's going to kill more and more workers. Oi, 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 oi. Sacrifice these units on these probes. Takes out two probes. Mm, couple more. One more. There we go. Four probes get taken out. Does lose all of his units. Only has a single cyclone in production. Probably already has two marines out. No bunker at home though. Clem up when it comes to uh, the eco. And also tech-wise feeling pretty okay. There's not that many gates either for hero. But unit-wise might be in a little bit of trouble. This oracle is going to get, well, not quite taken out. There's three of them in the stalker. That's a lot of units actually. That is a, an insane amount of units as we see a bunch of these marines being taken out right now. Oracle moving forward could potentially try and kill that Cyclone. This Cyclone's gonna get repaired here. Yep, one more shot and one of these adapts. Viking shows up as well and it feels like this is going to be, well, at least for now, Clem is going to be safe. Still wouldn't completely mind the bunker in this scenario. Hero is really holding down that unit button. He's going hard right now. He's, he's, he's all inning with this. This is a, this is an all in. There's no, th yes, there's an okay eco behind this, but this is it. SCVs need to be pulled right now. They are being pulled. Cyclone out of position. Viking out of position. Tank is going to get taken out before any of these units come in. Oh, Cyclone actually is here. Sorry, did miss that. But the Viking not being here definitely didn't help. More Marines being taken out, and I do believe that actually Heroes is going to be capable of doing it, taking out every single unit. Yes, there was a lot of probe damage, but no bunker at home for Flam. And for a second game in a row, it feels like... Well, it feels like the game just ends because of the, the lack of a bunker. I guess last game, it didn't even really end. Clem still was in a playable position. Do see a recall here. The moment the Phoenix count is higher than the Marine count, life is just going to suck so freaking much for, for a Terran player, right? Uh, Phoenix are, can just continuously get rallied across the map and pick off important units. So the moment you build a tank or a Cyclone, you'll need to repair it continuously. You can't really fight either. A single adept is already annoying because you need to pull SCVs to deal with it. Here we go. We get a big lift. We lift the tank here. And it's going straight for the Marine. I like that because the follow-up is an Oracle coming out here. And more of these gate units moving across the map. So if you just clear all the anti-air, the Oracle is going to be proper in balance at this point. It seems like Heroes following this up with uh, either Blink or Charge or Glaive Adept. He has shown... Uh, that he likes all three of these. Wouldn't mind just charging the Dark Shrine. Honestly, not that bad of a move. Ah, Dark Shrine perhaps not that useful. Clem moving out of position a little bit too far as the Oracle shows up. Uh, tries to target down the Stalkers in the far back. Can we get a lift off here? Phoenix is out of energy, which means that all of these units actually get taken out. Oracle gets to stay alive. Oh, that was kind of sloppy out of, uh, out of Hero, honestly. Losing more units than he should have, but 
he's still in a fantastic spot. Up 12 workers, superior infrastructure, which is super important in this matchup specifically. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be playing, what, seven, six, eight gates or so? Somewhere between six and eight. Uh, with plus one, with glaives, you have so many valuable air units still as well, which can lift key units, which can deal damage, pick up mules, basically pick up SCPs as well. Corporal needs to be careful, don't want to be losing that. It's going to pick up three workers once again. This is just such good control. Four workers get killed, and these are small things, but they really add up over time, right? Just flying back in with that oracle, the Clem might believe he has a chance if this type of stuff doesn't happen. I don't think Clem wants to be moving out right now. I, maybe he believes he wants to be moving out, but I, he, he wants to be sitting at home. I can guarantee you that. Like a, a tank on the high ground. Of course, once again, Clem isn't aware of the fact that this is 2-base coming out of Hero. If he did know that this was 2-base coming out of Hero, then perhaps he, <laughs> he wouldn't be so keen of moving down this ramp. Just stay upstairs. Honestly, even when he's sieged up, this is going to be a very difficult hold. Adept Shade comes in. We have a massive SCV pool as well. And yeah, tanks are going to be practically useless. Lifted up into the sky. Marines do have plus one, I believe. Do have stim, do have combat. Clem is making a little bit of a fight out of it. But there's just so many units here for Hero. And I think, yeah, Clem's just going to leave the game here. 33 against 23 supply. Hero looks very happy with that. Gives Dragon Phoenix Gaming the 5 1 win as well. Ooh, did you just flip off the camera? I think so. Big moves. All right. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Bye-bye.